right guys welcome back to this numpy tutorial series and yeah we are going to be starting with the basics of numpy one thing i want you guys uh, to know that whatever code we are going to be writing any comment that we are going to be writing inside over here is going to be all uploaded to github so you don't have to worry about remembering the code or anything uh, i'm just going to be putting the github code down in the description below so you can go and check it out and don't worry about the code or the comment section and another thing is that you can use whatever editor you want. You can use PyCharm, Sublime Text, and even Command Prompt. I'm going to be just using uh, this Visual Studio code, but whatever you're using, make sure you install NumPy. To install it, it's pretty easy. Just write pip install NumPy and press enter. I'm not going to be installing it because I've already installed it on my computer. After installing it, you can just import NumPy. And what we are going to be doing is because we'll be referencing this NumPy library a lot. So I'm just going to be using this as NP. So this is kind of a shortened form of NumPy. You can just call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it NP. And let's get started with creating a very simple array, a one dimensional array. So I'm just going to be creating a variable and I'm going to write NP, that is the NumPy, and we're going to write an array. And inside parenthesis, we are going to put a square bracket. And for now, I'm just going to create a simple list or an array of 1, 2. And let's just print out this A over here and see how it looks so let's print this out and you can see a simple array has been printed and this was a one dimensional array so now what we're going to do is we are going to create a two dimensional array and from now on we'll be creating a multi-dimensional array so what we'll be doing is we are going to create another variable of b and we are going to be doing the same thing np.array and one thing i want you guys to know is that whenever you move up a level so for example over here this is a one dimensional array and whenever you want to create a two dimensional array, what you can do is you can just copy this thing over here and paste it two times. So inside these parentheses, I'm just going to paste this one time, put a comma and paste it again. And now we have two arrays over here. And then what we can do is we can just put an extra square bracket outside. And this is how you create a two dimensional array. So let me just, uh, this bracket got removed. So let me just add that. And now we can print this out and let me change the values a little bit. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to write over here a little bit different just to kind of give it variety. I'm just going to write uh, 10, 11, 12 and 13. And for this one, I'm just going to make it a little bit even more different. 20, 21, 22 and 23. So now let's print this out and see how it looks. And you can see that this was our one dimensional array. And now over here, you can see this is a two dimensional array. In one dimensional array, there's only X. And in two dimensional array, there's also X and there's also Y. And now we are going to create a three dimensional array. So we are going to be doing the same thing. That is, we are going to copy and paste this whole thing twice, just like we did before. So I'm going to copy this over here and I'm going to paste this. And instead of B, we are going to just write C. And then we need to copy and paste this twice. Just like I told you guys, if you move up a dimension, you can just copy and paste this twice. So I'm just going to paste it again. And then I'm going to add a square bracket just outside just to enclose everything properly, just like we did with 2D. And now because this is going to be a very long one, so I'm just going to remove a little bit of extra stuff from here. And then instead of just having two arrays inside each of these, first of all, let's just print this out so that you guys know how it looks. So I'm just going to print this out over here. And you can see that this is our three dimensional area over here. So for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this A and B just so that you guys can concentrate on the C properly. I'm going to run this one up and you can see that there are three two brackets outside and then in the innermost bracket there are these two arrays now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another element of array over here so i'm just going to write um let's say 10 comma 11 and over here i'm just going to write um let's say 12 comma 13 just to make it a little bit more interesting and see how it affects the changes and now you can see that an extra uh, array element has been added 12 13 and 10 11. So this is how a three dimensional array looks. Now we are going to actually look at how do we verify, let's say an array has been given to you and you need to find out the dimension of that array. So that is very, very simple. What you can do is you can just, uh, it's just a one line thing. So I'm just going to show it to you guys to find out. You can just write end dim and that's pretty much it. This is going to give you the dimension of the array. So let me just actually just do it with C because this is a three dimensional array. So let's just print this out and you can see that three has been printed over here. And now let's just try out B and you'll know that this is a two dimensional array because two has been printed over here. Now let's learn how to identify the shape of an array. So what exactly is in the shape of an array? So shape of an array helps us identify the number of arrays and the number of elements inside those arrays. 
So how do we get the shape of an array? It's also pretty easy. So what we are going to do first is get the shape of A. So I'm just going to print out uh, A dot shape and that's pretty much it. So let's print this out and you can see it would give us two comma nothing. So you can see this is a one dimensional array and there are two elements inside this array. So it gives us two over here. And now let's try it out with this B. So we are just going to do the same thing. Uh, instead of A dot shape, I'm just going to write B dot shape and I'm going to print this out. So it gives us two comma four. So how many arrays there are inside this B multidimensional array? So there are two arrays in the outmost layer and each of them contain four elements. So the idea of the shape is to get the number of arrays and the number of elements inside each array. So there are two arrays over here. That is why two and the number of elements inside each array is four. And that is why four. You can also say that it has two dimensions because it is a 2D array, that is why 2 and inside each dimension there are 4 elements, that's why it says 4. I'm just going to copy a uh, comment so that you guys kind of can remember what it means. Obviously you don't need to like remember all this stuff, this will all be in the GitHub code, all these comments. But if you want to kind of refer back while we are talking about it, this comment can be a little bit helpful. So we're going to do basically the same thing with the C 3D dimension. So instead of uh, this B dot shape, I'm just going to print out C dot shape and let's see how that looks. So you can see that there's two comma three comma two. So the outermost layer contains two arrays. That is basically this one and this one, the outermost layer. And then each of these two arrays contains three arrays. They are kind of the nested arrays. So each of these two arrays, you can see these contains three arrays. So that is why three. And then each of these uh, three arrays, there are only two, two elements inside each of them. And that is why this two over here. So I'm just going to copy the statement again so that you guys can remember it. If we talk over this again, it's very important to understand what the shape means. And that is why I'm kind of repeating it again. So first we need to go to outermost dimension, then inside that, and then what number of elements each of these array contains. So in case of the C dot shape, you can see that the outermost layer has two arrays and then inside these two arrays there are three arrays you can see these are nested inside these square brackets let me press ctrl z and then it, they, each of them contains two elements so for example let's change it up a little bit let's say we remove this one from here and let's say we remove this one from here so the shape of c is going to change now let's run this you can see now instead of two because we removed an element over here the outermost still contains two arrays and then inside that there are also two arrays and then inside that there are only two elements so for example if we add an extra element let's say in each of them so let me just copy and paste this everywhere so that you guys can understand it properly now this two will change to three because now there are three elements inside each of them and now to get size so to get size it's really really easy we are just going to print out a dot size and we are just going to do this with all of them so I'm just going to copy and paste this for B and C. Let's say B and C and you'll be able to see the number of elements inside each of them, 2, 8, 12. So these are the total number of elements inside any of these np dot arrays thing that we have created. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. In the next video, we are going to learn how to get specific element. So for example, if this is the array that we have, this is the 2D array we have, how do we get this number 23 from this B array? And if we have a 3D array, how do we get this too? Or if we want a column or a specific row from uh, this multidimensional array, how do we get that? Let's say we want all of these four numbers. How do we get that? Let's say we only want 21 and 22. How do we get that? So getting these elements is really, really important so that we can change them or do anything we want to them. But first step is to get them using indexes. But we'll talk more about that in the next video. So I'll see you over there.